You hear it before you see it. A low rumble in the Arctic silence. The kind of sound that makes ravens scatter from pine branches and snow hares pause mid-bound. It isn't thunder. It's deeper. Ancient. In the Siberian permafrost, a crack spiderwebs across the ice. Then a tusk, curved, yellowed, impossibly large, pushing through the frost like a ship breaching ice. And behind it, movement. Ahead, broad and wool-covered, steam curling from flared nostrils, eyes blinking for the first time in thousands of years. A woolly mammoth, alive. Not in a lab, not in a zoo, not behind glass or under microscopes, but in the wild. What would happen if one of history's greatest giants walked into the world that we've built without it? Let's follow her and find out. She's old, but she doesn't know it. Her muscles remember more than her mind does. The urge to stand, to shake snow from her back, to move. She rises. Her name? We don't know it. So let's call her Nala, born under aurora skies, once part of a thundering herd across icy steppes. But she wakes up alone. All around her is silence, not the kind she's used to, not the hush between storms or the quiet of the sleeping herd. This is different, lifeless. The mammoth steps forward, her massive feet cracking frost-hardened moss. Snow dust lifts around her like a mist. Her thick coat is stiff with ice. Her breath is steam. She trumpets instinct more than intention. A sound older than the pyramids echoes through the empty sky, but no one answers. Days pass. She walks north towards the chill. Somewhere in her ancient bones, she senses that warmth is the enemy, but the world has changed. Glaciers have retreated. The air smells strange. Even the stars feel unfamiliar to her. She follows old instincts through the tundra, past twisted steel towers and distant lights that flicker like fireflies but never die. She sees her reflection in oil-stained puddles. She avoids roads but watches the endless stream of vehicles from the shadow of the forest with curiosity. Somewhere in Alaska, she finds food frozen sedges and bark, willow twigs and pine moss, enough to keep her moving. But the climate is fickle. A warm snap leaves her panting, her wool a prison of heat. Still she moves, driven by memory, not her own. She finds a herd of musk oxen, and they scatter when they see her. She trumpets again, a sound meant for kin. But still, there's no answer. Suddenly a wildlife camera blinks, then another. Within hours, footage of a lone mammoth stumbling across the Yukon spreads online. Most people think it's just a hoax. A man in Montana posts, that's just CGI, nice try National Geographic's. But satellite footage confirms it. Then the hunt begins, not by predators this time, but by us. Helicopters scour the wilderness. Scientists mobilize. News vans jam mountain roads. Activists argue with skeptics on live streams. But Nala keeps moving. She crosses into British Columbia and then the Rockies. One rancher says, I saw her, big as a barn, eyes like she was thinking. A think tank in San Diego debates legal ownership. A biotech firm offers a reward, and a tabloid claims that she's the result of secret cloning experiments gone rogue. But Nala doesn't care about that. She doesn't know anything about that. She just wants to find a home. Eventually, she finds something close to familiar. The boreal shield, dense forest, frozen lakes, few roads, more silence. Here she slows, grazes longer, resting more. Her eyes stay on the horizon, waiting. One night, something answers. A shape in the trees, large, four-legged, not human, not ox, an elephant, not wild. A conservationist group years ago tried relocating a small Asian elephant herd to a private Canadian preserve as a climate resilience experiment. Mostly it failed, except one survived, and now it sees her. The two approach, cautious, then they touch trunks. They stay together from then on, a strange interspecies alliance, both ancient in lineage, both displaced, each believing the other to be the last of their kind. Months later, a ranger reports something incredible. Tracks. Not just a mammoth, smaller, softer, side by side, then a sighting. The world watches as a woolly mammoth and what appears to be a juvenile, fuzzy, clumsy, unmistakably still a mammoth, wanders across a snowy ridge in Alberta. Scientists erupt. Was she pregnant when she thawed? Could she have conceived with the elephant? Impossible. Yet, the calf walks. People cry. Governments panic. Sanctuaries are built. Poachers take aim. Zoos draft billion-dollar offers. Ethical debates roar. Is it right to let them roam free or to lock them away into protection? But Nala doesn't wait for an answer. She disappears again. Some say she headed north. Some say she's in Alaska now, leading the calf through the mountains, avoiding roads and avoiding us. Some say she died, and the calf wanders alone now. But every year, around the first snowfall, a camera somewhere catches something. A shape, a trunk, a whisper of another time. And for just a moment, 
the world feels bigger again. Of course, it's unlikely, if not impossible, for this to ever really happen. A frozen mammoth wouldn't simply thaw out and walk away. The biological damage from freezing at the cellular level would be catastrophic. Ice crystals would shred tissue, organs would fail, muscles wouldn't move. But that doesn't mean mammoths won't walk again. With advances in synthetic biology and gene editing, scientists are working to create mammoth-elephant hybrids using preserved DNA from frozen specimens. It wouldn't be a perfect clone, but it would be close. There are many types of mammoths, not just the iconic woolly mammoth. The woolly mammoth may have stood around 10 to 12 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed up to 16,000 pounds. Other species, like the Colombian mammoth, were even larger, reaching heights of 14 feet and weights over 22,000 pounds. The last known population of woolly mammoths survived on Wrangell Island off the coast of Siberia and died out around 4,000 years ago, meaning they were still alive when the Great Pyramid of Giza was being built. So maybe we won't see them emerge from the ice. But through gene editing, surrogacy, and a determined will to undo the damage of our past, we may see their kind walk again. And when we do, whether in sanctuaries, the tundra, or something in between, we'll have to decide what kind of world we want to offer them. Not a cage, but a place to roam, to trumpet, to wake up. Maybe it isn't about whether we should bring mammoths back or not. Maybe it's about what we become once we do. The last time mammoths walked the earth, we played a part in their world. We were the predators who hunted them. Now, we can play a different part in the same story and hopefully emerge as changed as the mammoth we're trying to bring back. Maybe this time, we can be stewards and protectors. The mammoths belong to the story that we forgot that we're a part of. An older story than cities, older than kings. A story that still rumbles beneath the ice. And just maybe, it's time to wake it up.